Welcome to Photofines. I'm your host, Kevin, and this week we are beginning at Epcot. Now, we are at the American Adventure Pavilion, and these two doorways you see in the brick wall are normally not open. They are open for us right now, however, we are going into the Chase Lounge. Now, as you saw in the previous sign, the Chase Lounge is all about uh, people who own a Chase uh, credit card or a debit card, and that includes the Chase Disney Visa. Now, as you can see from the pictures here, uh, what it is is uh, a space that normally is not accessible to us uh, with some chairs and tables lying around, <coughs> and in this case, some soda freestyle machines. Now, this Coca-Cola is provided completely free of charge. If you're up here in the lounge and you're allowed to come up, if you hold a card or uh, bring up to, I think it's 10 of your, uh, your guests with you, uh, then the soda is completely free. Now, the Chase Lounge is uh, it takes place this year in the third floor of the American Adventure Pavilion, and this space was formerly, um, and, and I guess still is, uh, the Corporate Lounge. Now, many of the pavilions in Epcot have a Corporate Lounge because the place was built with corporate money in many cases, <clears throat> and they wanted to provide a place for those corporations to uh, basically to host parties. And as a result, those uh, corporate lounges are usually entirely off-limits. So the view you're getting right now is normally not accessible to guests at all. And then we see that there are um, some paintings along the hallway. We'll have a closer look at that in a moment. And then this uh, space down at the front, uh, we will go into a couple of times in the course of our tour. First, however, let's look out the window, because this is just a view you just normally cannot get, a view of the rest of uh, World Showcase and uh, even Future World off in the distance there. And then the... Uh, the, the stage up at the front where they're doing the uh, food and wine concerts. Now this is what that lower pit area looks like and as you can see they've got a lot of furniture spaced out. Uh, probably these tables are not normally there. They are for the uh, for the Chase Lounge time because uh, people have sodas and so forth. Uh, but there is furniture around the outside so we will take a closer look at some of, wh of what some of those look like. Here's some of the props over on one side of that room and then let's step back up to the top part there where we'll uh, see this hallway down the side here. Now this hallway, uh, elegantly laid out as you can see with these uh, intricate fixtures over on the side, leads to some bathrooms. And so yes, I'm going to take you very briefly inside the bathroom so you can have a look at uh, what the decor looks like there. Once again, uh, we're only really paying attention to it because it's just a, kind of a more hidden piece of Disneyana that normally you cannot see. So, the Food and Wine Festival, obviously the reason for uh, Chase having its lounge, it's, the, um, it's presented by Chase, and so Chase has a, um, a prominent role as the sponsor of the festival. Now, from that balcony of that um, central zone here, the central hallway, you can see they have a couple of recharge stations set up where you can plug in your phone using the, uh, the wires that they provide. This is the back wall of that main hallway. We'll have a closer look at that again in just a moment. Now, there are some silhouettes in the, um, the smaller hallway, pretty close to where the elevator was we first came in at. Uh, these are done in 18th century style, as you can see, and are obviously meant to be something like um, our presidents of the United States, although they are not labeled as such. And uh, here they are in that small hallway leading into that first room that we were looking at when we first started this little tour. There's really two sides to the rooms. Um, this is all the way on one end <coughs> of the Chase Lounge where they're serving uh, drinks. It's a paid bar over here. You can get uh, beer and wine. And then they have um, some displays on the side here of both china and uh, glassware. So it's uh, done as though it were um, an expensive 18th century collection. Now from that room and looking onwards, this is kind of more the overview shot. There's the elevator and staircase where we came in. There's that upper hallway and then that lower um, seating area. And here are the promised images I told you about of the portraits along that back wall. And we'll have a look at both sides of the portraits. That one's in the middle. And then this is the still life portrait on the other side from there. And then back down over to that lower area, you can um, see in some of these shots that people are playing games. They have some board games and so forth scattered on those tables. There was a television in that previous shot. And uh, as you can see, they've got bookcases with uh, artifacts um, uh, and, and uh, things like candlesticks and the fireplace as central motifs on the other side. Uh, and they've really just done mostly a minimalist job about uh, decorating in here. It looks uh, nice and upscale without kind of being garish and overdoing things. They have some additional collections in another bookcase on the other side over there. But it's not overwrought and overdone. And uh, we finish by looking at the globe all the way in one end, um, of course, pointed at the United States of America.
Now, I was asked some time ago to provide a photo tour of uh, Celebration, because I had mentioned it when we were there for the Pi Festival. So this is the road into Celebration. As you can see, it already looks kind of like a controlled area. And indeed, everything looks um, neat and pristine around here. So this is the hospital in Celebration. doesn't look much like a hospital. Uh, and most of the time, we think of this as what Celebration looks like, with these kind of houses that are... Uh, um, large and um, unique and individual, um, set back a little bit from the street, very wide streets. Um, this is the, the controlled image of celebration that everyone thinks of. There's the school in celebration. Uh, and as we make our way uh, into the suburban space, um, we'll see that it's quite leafy. There's a lot of shaded walkways and places for people to walk. Uh, which gives it a nice um, appearance and, and place to visit. And what we're going to do is from here walk over into the town center area, kind of the downtown area, uh, where they have different architecture. It looks a little unique and, and they, they want it to look quirky and interesting. They take pride in such uh, old time features as this clock in the town center area, as well as uh, many of their unique architectural features. You know, we're walking from here down the main drag, down Center Street, over to this center here, which uh, does allow cars to go through, but as you can see, it's also very pedestrian-friendly. Uh, and they do try to make it more of a pedestrian zone, uh, even though there is one spot for cars to go through there. Little touches like the horse and carriage, uh, at least uh, during the um, weekend we were visiting. Now, the uh, town center area has uh, this map. As you can see, it's laid out and uh, trying to encourage people to walk. Most of it is along this, uh, this lake. We'll have a look at it in a second there. And you can see as well that there are many different kinds of businesses that have taken up residence in the town center area. There's one of them, the theater, which I don't think is a theater anymore, although I'm not quite certain on that. Uh, a little water feature next to that lake we mentioned earlier and some housing in the area behind it there. Some of that housing is apartments. And there's that uh, central lake feature again. It's uh, designed to make the area very walkable, very livable. Here is a, a restaurant called the Columbia. It's an echo of the more famous and older one in Tampa, the original. Another look at that um, Art Deco um, kind of uh, theme uh, for the Celebration Movie Theater House. And stepping back out towards some of the businesses on the outside and looking again at some of the houses. Now, as you can see, the houses are not just large. They are unique to each other. Um, this was once an area owned by Disney, kind of a master plan community. People sometimes refer to it as a, a bit of a Stepford Wives area uh, because everything looks so controlled uh, and is obviously has to pass muster at a, a, at a policy level before you can build anything and the houses are large enough and the area uh, upscale enough that as you can imagine it's quite expensive to buy a house in celebration so it has the price tag you would expect to go along uh, with uh, such a such a unique distinctive area it even has its own fire station also fairly highly decorated um, and looking like its own architectural feature that does it for this week of photo finds we thank you as always for your attention and we will catch you next time